Hello, this is Jeremy Brown with Salient Consulting. We're taking a look at the Web Viewer Integrations Library. In the previous video, we looked at how this file is set up. But in this video, we're going to take a look at the actual file itself and the many features which make it easy for you to manipulate and push an integration to your file. Let's get started. The library consists of more than 20 different integrations. I tried to find ones that made sense in FileMaker that solved a particular use case. For example, we have a calendar here. It's very useful to, to show appointment records on a calendar. We have some charting, of course. We have, let's see, a date picker somewhere right here that allows you to pick a range of dates and so forth. So the idea was to make these as FileMaker useful as possible, not replacing any functionality, but enhancing it. So you have a list here of the different integrations, and, and I'll be adding more as I go along here and continue to play with this file. Each integration has a demo and a code view that you can view. The demo simply just takes you to a page that shows you how it would work. For example, this card flip Go to the demo and we can see some nice cards here and we can click on one and flip it and then mark it correct and so forth. Up here in the upper right of the demo view are some quick little buttons here. In some cases you can actually add a question to the list and it will, it will render in the integration. There might be some additional settings and of course then the features, a description of the features of this particular integration. The code view is where you'll spend most of the time, so let's go to that and take a look. This is set up to be a playground of sorts so that you can view some information, manipulate some information, and see the changes happen on the preview. My colleagues Agnes Riley and my friend David Jandro helped me to make this the best possible for you, so I hope it really meets your needs. This first tab here on the left, we have just some simple notes. I've tried to write up the notes in the best way possible to give you the most information about how this is set up. You can also print these notes, by the way, with a button up here at the right. So you can print this out and have just a nice printable view of the notes. The next tab is the code view. The code view is where you'll spend most of your time as you manipulate a particular integration. And like I said, what you do over here on the left will be reflected in the right side. And we'll get into manipulation in the next movie. Each of the pieces of code are shown in a popover. So you can take a look at how the function is set up, how the jQuery is set up, and how the data is set up. I put the same developer notes on here so that you can refer to those as you're working with code. The third tab is the simple final HTML field. It's that calculation field that combines all of the different fields contents together and this has been very useful for me as I've developed these and work with these if something was not working correct over here I would copy this and paste it into some application that I could view then on the browser to find the errors so that was very useful and you may find it useful as well the source tab is the place from which this integration came tries to give you the version and the dates, and then it gives you some nice resources that you might use during your work with these. As you manipulate, for example, the colors, you probably will want to open up the hex color picker. If you need some information on a button tag, you can go to that as well. And of course, Salient Consulting in our blog, we have a bunch of posts tagged as web integration, which gives you more information about how to use the web viewer. Up at the top right, we have some buttons here that we'll get into specific buttons later on in other movies. I'll just point out a few. We've got the preview button here that just takes you to the preview. We've got that print notes that I talked about, the export and the default and reset we'll get into in another movie. The data button just opens up a new window to show you the records that make up this integration and there's some additional settings as i was developing it allowed for different options on the preview up here this is letting me know that there's a jquery library under the hood and that's actually a field that you don't see here in the code i've got three javascript fields that you can see and then you can potentially manipulate but there's actually a fourth and a fifth field in this table that holds the jquery min library and the ui library the reason why those are not available here for editing is simply you will not edit those. Uh, if there is ever a reason to update them, you do that on another layout. But for the 
typical integration, you would just leave those hidden. Notice if I uncheck this, I lose the functionality that the jQuery min library provides. So I'm going to add it back and make sure it's there. And there's also the Google API. So there is a field in this system that holds my Google API key, and I'll need that for a couple of the integrations. We've got another button that allows us to go to another integration, and we have finally the home button as well. So that's it. Those are the features which make this library work for anyone. It allows you to, to understand, to view and manipulate the code, and see how the integration will work. It also gives you some background information on this particular integration. So there you have it. In the next movie, we'll take a look at how to manipulate one of these integrations, how to make it work for your custom app before you export it into that file. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to our website for more blog posts and videos on this library and other great techniques. Have a great day.